Well, Mike, thanks for thanks for sitting down for, with me and taking the time. We're here at uh, the National Ski Area Association's uh, Eastern Show here in February at Killington Resort. Certain ski areas are uh, on the chopping block, and others are in the process of of acquisition. So, um, uh, acquisition is a big big part of your your background and yep. your uh, history, your career. Um, maybe take us back and, and uh, give us a little bit of your background, how you got to here today. Yeah, well thank you for having me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the, uh, the background is I started uh, in this business um, teaching probably in 66 or 67. Um, got out of school um, uh, at Ithaca and decided, uh, having decided from a couple of projects I had worked on that I was going to be in the ski business and I was going to grow up to be a general manager. Um, found a um, um, management training program right here at Killington. Yeah. Um, right here. And uh, went through that. Did uh, a ton of operations work here in Sugarloaf and Bristol Mountain in New York State. Yeah. And uh, then became part of the um, most I guess the most recent wave, you historical wave of consolidation um, in the ski industry when I was with um, um, Les Houghton at yeah. uh, American Skiing Company yeah, yeah. and helped acquire those units. And then um, when the Department of Justice and in its infinite wisdom and spending your tax dollars uh, decided that uh, we were monopolistic, um, I started disposing of uh -huh. ski areas. and. Uh, since 2001, when I left American Skiing Company, um, almost all of my professional uh, um, focus has been on selling either ski areas or ski resorts. Right. Um, well, that, that teased that up really well. You know, in terms of consolidation, um, if you could provide some context, it's February 2019. You know, Jay Peaks on the chopping block. There's a lot of there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of talk about what might be the next move for a Vale or an Altera. But perhaps for those of us who aren't really focused that in that deep, uh, maybe you can set the table for us and uh, give us an idea of what the players look like and, and what the current game is. Sure. Um, you know, at 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 this point, um, there's a variety. Uh, vale. Certainly, yep. um, is is acquisitive. Um, Altera is growing their portfolio mm -hmm. um, to um, um, sell its passes, which is a significant um, uh, piece of any discussion about consolidation in the industry. But there are there are others. Uh, Peak Resorts, which sells, I don't know. I think it's. 20 odd thousand of its peak passes mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. Um, uh, slightly different profile. Um, there are, you know, there's Powder Corp um, that is still acquisitive. Um, and then there are um, um, owner operators with uh, fewer uh, ski areas but want to bring in a second generation or a third generation of family. Um, and, and interesting to me, there's OzCap that took the CNL portfolio and um, disposed of it much more quickly than I thought they were going to, uh, which is a whole nother interview. That, that one just, you know, uh, was crazy. Uh, uh, you can divvy up the pie only so much and you can only steal so many pieces of pie from your neighbors. At what point does, uh, do, does this consolidation shift focus and focus on, on growth? You tell me. The short answer okay. is that the multi-venue sponsors, the Alteras, the Vales, the Peaks, the Ozcaps, and, uh, and Jim Coleman, and, and some of the larger independents, have to have a summit. Mm -hmm. They have to sit and they have to decide that not only are we all best friends in this industry, that right. we die for each other, but that we're going to spend our money together and we're going to create an environment that um, markets and sells the um, positive aspects of the 
um, sport to create the passion that mm -hmm. you and I feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the short answer. Yep. Um, until that happens, um, this sport and these resorts and those areas are at risk for failure. Mm. Um, Bill Jensen wrote a, uh, an article, irritated the hell out of people um, about five years ago, six years ago, and um, um, he's, he was pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, it, 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 I, I'm a firm believer that we shouldn't lose even the smallest area. Um, there, there, there is financial um, um, reality to that. That um, you probably can make a family living at a, I'm going to say, forty thousand skier visit area. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some some folks will do less and be happy more su survive. Yeah. Um, but when we looked originally, um, um, we were 100,000 minimum visits. Right. Um, but I think there's a place for, you know, the smaller areas. Um, Lookout Pass in particular, uh, as an example, does uh, about 40,000 skier visits, 40,000 bike visits. Right. Um, right. So are you lives. envisioning, in terms of uh, that collaboration, that cooperation, you mentioned you know, marketing, and would that also be, uh, you know, a past product uh, type of solution? It's going to be a past product, at least for the foreseeable future, because um, the past products have been, um, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the method of exploitation yeah. um, du jour. And, uh, and that's really, I think, what the, um, the players in the past market are right, focused right, on. Right, right, right. So that, that's going to continue. It's going to continue, however, until it either succeeds, which, going back to my previous comment, unless um, there is a focused effort to grow the sport, um, there's going to be no more market left to right, steal right, from one right. another, um, or it's going to fail. And right. if it fails, then it'll go away. Yeah. You know, think about well, the Max Pass last year. Uh -huh. Greatest pass ever built for me, and um, it's gone. And and you know, I hear as I ride the lifts and talk to people who who owned it, um, they miss it. I miss it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we'll see. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. This is an experiment. Completely agree with you. I don't think that that you know consolidation is going to do anything to help grow. Anything. Oh no. No, no, no. It's not intended to. No. And, and, and the participants understand that. Yeah. It's a, it, it is a tactic to a strategy. Yeah. The tactic being, I'm going to steal your guest so I don't have to create a new guest. Right. Right. Now, interesting, um, there have been experiments or attempts at, um, um, at, at, at introducing new folk and, and what the retention uh, of those new folk is. I'm not sure it's been, um, um, again, I, it's not been funded well enough. I don't think it's been um, managed well enough. Uh, I, I'm not convinced that <clears throat> National Ski Areas Association, um, as an entity, feels that it is NSAA's goal, job, raison d'etre, um, to be growing the sport. I've not seen anything. You know, I think they see themselves as a lobbying group. Um, perhaps I, as a lobbying group and as a, as, as, as a facility um, to bring together vendors that provide services and, and materials to um, the op side um, and maybe to impart some um, industry-wide uh, information to help minimize risk, um, minimize damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, that's how I see it. And that's how I've seen it since being a member. Yeah. I mean, I've been here a long time. Right. I've, I've, that's my take. Yeah, I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful. I'm hoping that with, with, with change um, comes a, a shift in focus and a realization of the opportunity and the risk that if we do nothing, if we continue to let uh, the local television station and the media control what the Im image of skiing and riding is, we're not going to have 
much to 